Yes, uh, Mikhail Kotsiborat, I'm a cardiologist uh, at St. Luke's Mid America Heart Institute in Kansas City, USA. Well, so Step Half Path was a program, is a program that actually has two trials in it. Uh, the first of these was the Step Half Path trial, which we presented at European Society of Cardiology last year and published in the England Journal of Medicine. And then here at ACC, uh, we just presented the second installment, that Step Half Path Diabetes trial. So the idea behind the entire program is it's not an accident that 80% of patients that have half path heart failure with preserved ejection fraction uh, are living with overweight and obesity. The idea is that obesity may be in fact causing heart failure in these patients, maybe the root cause. So we need to target obesity as a therapeutic strategy for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in these patients. And so that was the hypothesis that we were testing in the step half path program. And we already showed in the first step half path trial last year that treatment with semaglutide produces very large improvements in heart failure related symptoms and physical limitations, as well as exercise function, in addition to uh, reduction in body weight. So uh, you can ask, why did we have to do a second trial in people with obesity related heart failure and diabetes? There are actually a number of different reasons. So people with diabetes, we already know, don't lose as much weight with incretin based treatments like semaglutide or other, uh, uh, actually any other anti-obesity drugs, the same story, they don't lose as much weight as people without diabetes. And of course, we think that weight loss is a component, uh, a factor in the benefits that we see. So that's one reason why we needed to study them separately. Uh, second is patients with diabetes who have half path represent a more severe phenotype. They have more severe disease, which may not respond the same way to treatment. And the third is that they're much more likely to be treated with SGLT2 inhibitors, which of course could potentially have an impact in terms of treatment response as well. So for all these reasons, uh, we did actually two separate trials. We designed the program from the beginning to have two separate trials, one in obesity-related heart failure without diabetes and one in obesity-related uh, half path with STAT2 diabetes. So both trials were designed in the same way. So for STAT half path diabetes trial, uh, patients that had documented half path uh, with additional kind of enhancing features. Um, and the BMI of 30 and above were randomly assigned to either semaglutide with a target dose of 2.4 milligrams once a week or matching placebo and treated for 52 weeks. And the two uh, dual primary endpoints were changed in the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire, which is uh, the gold standard of evaluating heart failure related symptoms and physical limitations. And the second was change in body weight. And we also had a number of confirmatory secondary endpoints, including looking at excess function with six minute walking distance, hierarchical composite, which, all, which also integrated clinical events like death and heart failure hospitalizations and urgent visits, in addition to KCCQ and six minute walking distance, and also changes in CRP, which is a marker of inflammation. The bottom line is that semaglutide significantly improved heart failure related symptoms and physical limitations as measured by KCQ clinical summary score. Uh, the uh, between group difference was about 7.3 points in KCQ, which is a very large improvement. Uh, and it was very similar to actually what we saw in patients without diabetes in the first step half F trial. Uh, there was also a greater degree of weight loss uh, with semaglutide versus placebo, about 6.4% difference. Uh, semaglutide also improved six minute walking distance. Uh, uh, there was a significant benefit on this hierarchical composite endpoint and also significant reduction in inflammation. In addition, uh, semaglutide also reduced uh, anti-proBNP, which is a marker of congestion, uh, significantly by about 20%. And also there were fewer heart failure events of hospitalizations and urgent visits in the semaglutide groups and the placebo group. The number of those events was small. It was not an outcome, hard outcome trial, but they were distributed quite favorably uh, to semaglutide versus placebo. Out of 25 patients with those events, seven were in the semaglutide group and 18 in the placebo group. And finally, semaglutide was very well tolerated with actually significantly fewer serious adverse events than in the placebo group. Well, I think collectively, when you combine the results of both trials in the program, what it clearly indicates is that semaglutide is a completely novel and 
a very effective treatment option for patients with this type of heart failure. Uh, I think that should have an impact on uh, guidelines, should have an impact on clinical practice, uh, because we truly lack effective therapies for this patient populations that sorely needs them. Uh, and I think it opens up a whole new avenue of clinical research as well, because there is a lot going on in the anti-obesity space with drug development. And I think the future is very bright in terms of testing those agents, not just for weight loss, but also for really significant benefits in patients with heart failure. I think take home message is, uh, if you have a patient with obesity-related heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, semaglutide is a highly effective and well-tolerated treatment option. And obesity is not just a comorbidity in this patient population, but it's likely a root cause. It's likely a, a root cause of the development and progression of heart failure in many of these patients should be the target for intervention. I think we've answered a lot of questions, but one of the questions is, you know, are the benefits sustained long-term? We only treated patients for 52 weeks. So while there was no evidence of any attenuation of benefit, in fact, it continued to amplify over time. Uh, studying it over a longer period of time would be a value. Uh, obviously, the big question is, you know, do we need to do larger, longer-term uh, hard outcome trials with anti-obesity medications in this space? And I think the answer is yes, we absolutely need to do that.